All right, welcome to Mr. Fix's Repair Shop. Uh, this opportunity came up uh, to uh, apply some of this lovely checkered tape and uh, to, to beautify Stella here. But uh, in this process, we're going to do a little bit of teaching. Uh, I've removed the screws from the turn signal lens because I need to get underneath here. But uh, we had, uh, had a question about uh, how do we debug and... Uh, if we have a turn signal light that doesn't light on one of these. So I'm going to turn this around so we can see what's going on inside. And uh, here we have the uh, the back of the bulb with the reflector and this, this nasty setup here that's going to be taken loose so we can see what's going on. Uh, bear with me a moment. All right, through the magic of television. Got that all taken care of. So here we have the back of the fixture. You can see this, this outside part is conductive. This is the ground which uh, is screwed into the chassis through these screws here and, and here. The, uh, the center part of the bulb attaches through here through this wire which has a little bit of tape on it and some goo and it has this little terminal. So potential failure points are uh, this, you can see there's a big old glob of solder on there. Hey, I did that on purpose, because uh, this rivet was loose. So that's a pot potential failure port, particularly on this, because it tends to uh, see a lot of stress. And uh, the other failure point is here on the bulb. You can see this strap that goes from the center out here to this screw, and it's actually grounded to the cowl through this screw. So, let's uh, see the other side, and here is our brass pin. This is actually attaches uh, to the body of the scooter, and uh, gives us our point of contact for the positive end. So when you turn on the turn signal, uh, this sends uh, available electricity through the wire, up through, down, and into the center pin of the lamp. So I have my... Uh, test leads. Red to red, black to black. Hook up. Let me give my camera skills. There's the black and there's the red. Never the two shall touch or arcs thou shalt make. So the body of the scooter should all be grounded so I choose oftentimes just the uh, the lead there. For, uh, for grounding purposes, so when I uh, touch this pin, the light should come on. Oh dear, something has happened. Let's try to figure out what happened. So we go to the nearest point on the uh, side. Of course, if we touch here, there's going to be arcs and sparks. Yes, yes, there is. Oh, look, I've forgotten to attach the center wire. So if I touch the center, just the center, not the body, our light doesn't come on. Well, what's going on here? Do we have a good connection here? Perhaps not. Center pin. Hey, there it is. We have to have a good connection in order for this to work. So to troubleshoot this, we'll put this connector back on and touch the, uh, the center pin over here. The light comes on. So if we didn't have a good ground somewhere, we could find that by attaching this to the center pin of the bulb and start touching around. So if it touches right on the base, I mean, if it doesn't do this, you've got a bad bulb. That's pretty obvious. Uh, start touching around other places on the cowl. Uh, touch your screw. That should have it light, and it does, so we've got a good connection there. If, if you don't get a good connection, get a good connection here, but you still don't get one here, attached to that screw, if we don't get a good connection back to here, it is entirely possible that this wire that comes up through the inside of the cowl is broken, or it's not connected here, so we'd have to take this apart. I'm not going to demonstrate that. But uh, one way to, uh, to tell there, you know, we're going to have to get out our handy-dandy multimeter. Uh, let's take, take this out of the way. This is going to turn into quite the uh, experiment. 
So this doesn't have a buzzer on it. This is your standard meter that you get. Harbor Freight, three bucks when they're on sale. Hey, they work great. Let's get this meter out of the way. I'm just gonna use my, my black lead as the ground. It's hard to do this with one hand. So we set this to any of the ohm scales. I'm gonna put that right on there. I'm gonna take the red lead in my hand and uh, the 200 ohm scale will work just fine. So if the, uh, so if we can get a look and see what's on it. Multimeters are all a little bit different. DC volts measuring potential. You can measure between two points that has current through them. Uh, AC voltage, battery checker, DC amps. Uh, we have DC amps at the 10 amp scale, which uses a different port. Diode checker, we're concerning ourselves with the ohms. Ohms has this little omega symbol. So generally for this purpose, we'll set this up for the lowest ohm scale. And start checking things. When you short the leads together, I'm gonna to touch this right to the other lead. That's okay to do. We should be getting, we got a good thing, almost goes to zero. Well pretty close. When it reads like this, it's infinity. When we get a good connection, it should go down almost to zero. If you put it on a higher scale, it's less noticeable. I think these are the, I, you just watched me drop this, so it may not be in the best of health. Hey, it's hard to afraid if I break it, I just go get a new one. Have to bust out the Heath kit, I will, but this is what most people will have. So I wanted to demonstrate with what most people have. So a fairly low number gives you good continuity. Uh, some of these have a buzzer in them, that makes it real easy, real easy setup. So as we go through here, if we have good continuity at the uh, chassis of the socket, which we do. If we didn't, we can start coming in here and starting to look at, okay, do I have it right here at this screw? If I have it at the screw, I should have it at the strap. If I have it at the strap, it, I should have it at the base of the bulb. And if I go through the bulb, I should have the resistance of the bulb, which would be slightly higher, volt, higher voltage drop, result in a little bit more resistance. It's sort of hard to tell with this junky meter. And we should have it the whole way back at this pin, touch this pin, we should have continuity. So our test was, you know, do we have continuity the whole way through this wire that comes through here? Well, we can do that. I can take this lead off, I can touch it to the center pin, or just pull this wire loose, clamp it to there. And on the ohm scale, I should have continuity. If I don't have continuity there, I've got a bad wire. I've got to investigate something here, something along here. Maybe this connector's bad, maybe it's pulled out. So that's sort of the, uh, the test. Electricity has to flow in a complete path from, well, current flow, positive to negative electron flow, negative to positive. But it has, the point is it has to be a complete circuit. And you never touch the positive to the negative without some kind of resistance in here, you're gonna get some sparking going on. So the bulb provides that resistance. That's where our voltage drop occurs. Our current passes through there, gives us that, uh, that resistance that we need to expend the energy, give us the light. And uh, that, that, that's about it. Uh, points of failure once again. Uh, corrosion here. This center pin where it's been soldered. This gets nasty in here. It doesn't want to make contact. If you do have uh, access to soldering iron, you can clean that up real good, solder it in place, and uh, that solves that problem. Or if uh, you don't, take a, a little punch and your hammer and gently beat it down until it makes good electrical contact. This would, this would move. If this little contact moves, you don't have a good electrical contact. So see how that works. I'm going to pop that bulb out. You can see down inside, 
the center pin where that needs to make contact. Look here if there's dirt on the bulb and it's not making contact, you can rough that up a bit. Make sure it is making contact, maybe even a little dielectric grease on the outside and on the inside. Ensure that uh, if moisture gets in there, it's going to be wicked away and kept away from, from the electrical connection. So that was, uh, that was a lot of talking for very little amount of diagnostics. So I hope that helps. Uh, basic electrical theory, just positive to negative, make sure it makes a continuous circuit. If you want to use this on voltage mode, do it this way and we can trace it through. We'll connect our negative lead here. We're going to connect both the negative lead of that and the negative lead of this to the same place. Now in voltage, this is difficult to do with one hand. Okay, on there. So set it on the closest thing we've got to uh, a little bit over uh, 12 volts is 12 volt battery. We can touch that here. Realize that's ah 12 volt battery, nominal voltage 13.8 on a full charge. Should have that here at our end of our test lead. So if we connect that up to the pin here, we can then start using positive lead to start checking. You know, we should have voltage here. We do. We plug that into the socket where it goes. We touch it to the center pin in the socket. We should have voltage there. If I can hold the camera and touch it at the same time. We do. So we know that it's getting to this center pin. If you can't do that, you know that it's not getting there. Pause for another second, put the bulb is back in. Now, when you measure to this side with the voltmeter, this is common. You have very little voltage drop here. See, we have a little bit of voltage drop. Oh, shame on me. I don't have a really, really good connection. I'm actually wasting 0.36 of a volt through a voltage drop on the back of this socket into the mounting screw. So there's a little bit of voltage drop. I could do a better job cleaning that up so my lamp lights a little bit brighter. I don't waste as much voltage drop through the frame. So that's it, boys and girls. Have fun and uh, solve your own problems with the right tools. Harbor Freight, cheap tool. All you need is a bulb or a jumper lead and you can do this yourself.